Hey guys, good to see you for Sunday School today. Let's start with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so we are doing another week of Noah's Ark. So I'm going to read it to you out of the Bible that we read from in church rather than our children's Bible. So it's going to be a little bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and give you some breaks here and there. I've got some ideas, okay? So this starts out in Genesis 6, verse 11, and it goes through Genesis chapter 9, verse 19. And we're going to skip a couple of verses here and there, but overall we're going to read the whole thing. So here we go. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight. Corrupt means really bad. And the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh. That means to kill everything. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and out with pitch. Then he gives instructions on exactly how to do it. For my part, I am going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is in the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant, covenant is a promise, with you. And you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing, of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two of every kind shall come into you to keep them alive. Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten, and store it up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. And now we're going to see some pictures from Sarah and her sister Emily when they went to visit a mock-up. That means a version of where it looks like the Noah's Ark. So let's pause here, and we'll see some pictures from, Noah, from Noah's Ark when Sarah and Emily visited. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here's our second segment now that we've seen those pictures. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out, that means kill, from the face of the earth. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the floods of the water came on the earth, and Noah with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives were sent into the ark to escape the waters of the flood of clean animals and of unclean animals, and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, all that day of the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were open. The rain fell on the earth, Forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind and all domestic animals of every kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every bird of every kind, every winged creature. 
They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. The waters swelled so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters swelled above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all swarming creatures that swam on the earth, and all human beings. Everything on dry land and whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, human beings and animals and creeping things and birds of the air. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those that were with him in the ark. And the water swelled on the earth for 150 days. Now we'll pause for a commercial announcement. We'll be right back. Finding yourself in some stinky animal living spaces? Just one small spray of ark so fresh helps you almost forget you're stuck on a boat with two of every kind of animals. Almost. Have a duck deliver some today. And here's our third segment of our story. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the waters subsided. That means they stopped. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heaven were closed and the rain from the heavens was restrained and the waters gradually receded, that means pulled back, from the earth. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated. Again, that means pulled back and stopped. And in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Arat. The waters continued to abate until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains appeared. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot. And it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundredth first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, and every animal, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out of the ark by families. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind, for the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth. Nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you shall rest on every animal of the earth and on every bird of the air, on everything that creeps on the ground and on all the fish of the sea into your hand. They are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And just as I give you the green plants, I give you everything. And then later it says, And you be fruitful and multiply, abound on the earth and multiply in it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant, that means a promise, with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. 
God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, that's a rainbow, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was peopled. So that's our story, and I'm wondering how much you paid attention. So let's have some pop questions, and I've got the answers, so no worries if you don't get them. Where did the ark finally rest after the flood? Do you remember? It was on the top of a tall mountain. I believe it was called Eric. How many days did it rain? Remember, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. That's a long time. That's over a month. How many days were Noah and his family and the animals in the boat? 150 days. So just to let you know, your school year is 180 days. So it's almost the entire time of where you would go to school for a whole year. That's a long time. How old was Noah when all this started? 600 years old. Oh, I can't imagine 600 years old. What colors did God paint the rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And what did God say after painting the rainbow in the sky? He said he would never again flood the earth. Whenever he saw the rainbow in the clouds, he, that he would see it and remember his promise. So what was the first thing that Noah and his family did after they got off the boat? Well, they remembered their promise and they thanked God. He built an altar and he thanked God. What did Noah do after he took his family and all the animals into the ark? Well, he shut the door because if you don't shut the door, all the rain would have come in. So that's important. So I hope you enjoyed our story. I know it was a long one in the Bible that we read in church rather than our story Bible, but I wanted you to hear it from the Bible that we read in church so that you can hear the words from that one and that we can get some of the answers that we might not necessarily get in our story Bible. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the pictures from Emily and Sarah, and I hope you enjoyed our little commercial announcement. So you guys have a great week, and I will see you again next week. Bye, guys.